Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, he was. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. Y'all know he's praying, but he's prayed so fervently for us. See, we, first of all, can't put, forth, put our knees on the ground to actually pray for the body, his body, because the body of Christ, your church body, is actually supposed to be strengthened by your prayers. And it's only strengthened by your prayers when you pray, right? But the, only the prayers that you put forth for the body strengthen it so that the head has something to rest upon. We don't want to pray for the body, which is the body of Christ, but then we complain about the household of faith when it's not strong. One more time. We are supposed to be praying effectively and fervently, right? Jesus prayed until, in his suffering, he prayed until great droplets of sweat slash blood fell from him. But he prayed effectively and fervently for us, looked in that cup and said, Yes, nevertheless, I will still pick them up. Moreover, I love them, and I, even in my wilderness spot, I will pray that they be blessed. And it, while his disciples are fell asleep on him, he was still praying for me. But I am tired. You see, I can't get up and pray. I don't want to do it. I don't feel like it. We get upset about the things that happen in the church, the household of faith, but we refuse while we are a part of the body and we are given the edict to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. We are given the edict to pray without ceasing. And yet, and still, even though James and that first Thessalonians and Peter and Paul, the first Thessalonians, come at us and tell us we are to pray without ceasing, we still do not want to do it. So the body is weakened because nobody's praying within the body or praying for the body for it. It's not strong, but we complain about it instead of doing what needs to be done to get it to that point. Your body's not strong because you are not praying for it. If you got up every morning and ate potato chips, would you expect a strong body, beautiful bones, and bright skin and a healthy smile? You'd be crazy if you did. We spend a lot more time complaining about the people in the body. We should spend more time praying for them, just like Jesus did by his example. But Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying. Do his suffering, he's praying, right? And the Bible says that God sent him ministering angels to minister to him. Minister to him, and they minister to him, and they bring him back to health. Obviously, we are at the assumption they not not to health. He wasn't in poor health, but he gets his strength up. They, the ministering angels got his strength up. Now, if Paul, if he asked Peter and the other disciples to pray, and they fell asleep and would not do it, but ministering angels came to do it in their place, and the strength still came to him. Then, and then it tells me that his body was strengthened by prayer. These ministering angels came to pray with him. Number one, ask yourself, am I praying in the body? But number two, ask who's praying for me. Mm. It, it, talks, it says the ministering angels came to pray for him. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I have to ask a question. Because in the Bible, Angelos is an angel, right? But Angelos is also known as the son of God. These are all, all angels, right? So we have to be able to open our eyes and look at the word and actually see what God is saying to the to the church and not just oh the Bible says I got my Bible I pay my Bible we don't have an understanding about how the spiritual realm works. We don't, our eyes are not open to the spiritual realm because we refuse to look past what's right in front of us. You don't look past your spiritual nose. That's why you can't see what God wants to do. You are 55 and still a spiritual virgin, stupid virgin, foolish virgin that won't be let in if you don't get yourself together. See what God is saying. He's saying, open your eyes, church. The only thing that's going to be the difference between you not getting into the um, bridegroom party and getting into it is not water, it's not wood, it's not uh, uh, chicken fat, it is oil. Huh? You have the oil of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it's not saying oil of the inspired word of God because everybody got that. Uh, everybody got that. So if there's five wise and five foolish virgins, uh, they're clean, right, until they're virginized. Uh, everybody got access to the Bible, but not everybody has the oil. Where does the oil come from? There's obviously five that had it and five that did not and the five that did not have it were in complete spiritual darkness because they did not understand what the word was saying who's praying in the body who's ministering 
to me. I love what God has done to me. Don't allow it to happen to me. Don't get me wrong. I believe that this was a, a, a demonic attack. I told y'all the week that happened. I got punched in the eye and the mark is still on my eye. This, don't, I, don't, I am not foolish enough to think that this was not a demonic attack, but I do believe that God uses it just like he uses everything that happens in the word. In Micah, right, we know that. We skip back to Micah. We know that uh, there was a point where the angels, I'm sorry, the sons of God were having a meeting in heaven and God said, who will lie to Ahab and tell him to do this, go into this battle. And this demon stood up and said, I'll do it. I assume that God could not do it because God is God that cannot lie, but he will employ and use the enemy if he needs that to be done. Now, uh, uh, now, uh, uh, now, now, skip it forward, knowing that the, the sons of God that are demons, fallen angels, can actually and do actually accomplish the, the will and the purpose of God. If they, if they can do that, why couldn't they strengthen Jesus in his mind of me? Why are we as a church so afraid to admit it that uh, Angelos means both the angel and son of God? Why are we so afraid to admit that uh, sons of God mean demons? Why are we afraid to admit that? Why are we afraid to open up our eyes and see what God is actually saying? And, uh, and here's the thing. We are not afraid to admit it to ourselves, I don't think, but we will not share it in the church. So these very real sons of God are coming, taking away the babes in Christ that come to the church. They're coming, uh, duping them. They're coming, putting wool over their eyes because the sheep in wool's clothing standing in the pulpit will lie. They will not admit and tell the real truth about what stands at the door. And so because we do not know what um, demons or what entities stand at the door waiting to attack us, waiting to take us, we walk out the door smiling, thinking we got it like that. And all we've got is... <laughs>